Welcome back to Sailing with the Jameses, part two of our rigging series. Right now, we are in the process of replacing our standing rigging. We are doing all the rigging ourselves and swapping to a hybrid rigging system. Some of the stays will remain traditional stainless steel wire, while others will be upgraded to a synthetic Dyneema. Last week, we kicked off the project by dropping the four stay to the ground and replacing the stainless steel wire inside. This week, we're focusing on the Dyneema sections. The stays that are changing to synthetic rigging are the caps, lowers, the two stays on the prodder, and the wires that connect the inner four stay to the hull. Now that you're all caught up, let's get into it. Hi, we're the James family. Are you sick of your day-to-day -day life? Ever thought about doing something different? Well, we did just that. We bought an unfinished aluminium catamaran and we're fixing her up as we sail around the world. Come along for the journey and click subscribe. Daddy? Mommy? Charlie? Daddy James. The baby stay is currently laying on the ground, ready to have the old wire taken out and replaced with the new wire. But let's rewind a bit to catch you up on what's been happening. Before the baby stay came down from the mast, we first had to loosen the stays under the bridge deck that connect the inner four stay to the hull. How's it going, hun? Good, good. So yeah, all we've got to do is take this top bit off here uh, we'll, and we'll pull the wire out. We'll thread the replacement wire through. It's all looking quite good. We're quite lucky there. Um, and uh, then we'll be able to haul it back up and put it back in. But we've also taken all the supports out for the bottom of the stays up. So there's bits and pieces everywhere. But this is the monkey plate. And the monkey plate is what went just up in the hole at the top there. Just up in there. And then the stays went down to here. So we're replacing it with Dyneema. We've had a crazy amount of corrosion all happening here. So I know you can see that there's probably a pressed stainless insert. All of them have that on alloy boats. It's a normal thing. We know stainless don't go the best with alloy that there is something that will, is in all of our fittings throughout the boat. Not all of them are corroding as crazy as this, but these ones are close to the water. So that with water is creating a bit of a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap it for Dyneema so that it's not all connected all up through the rig and with the wind and then the water all electrifying it. We're gonna still have a turnbuckle on one side so that we can still tension it all up here and a turnbuckle up the top to tension the, the stay as well. well um, yeah, that's what we're on today. It took ages to bash these out. A five minute job that it took like an hour each. They're really, really, really corroded. Anyway, I'll show you the pin. Lucky we're not reusing these and putting them back in. That's me putting jaws on and wiggling them and banging them and yeah, getting them out. But yeah, that's the master plan for today, so we're hoping to have the new one up by the end of the day. After the baby stay is done, that completes the wire portion of the stays getting replaced. No more wires need to be swapped, and we move on to the Dyneema rigging. Our first step with the synthetic rigging is to measure the lengths needed, factoring in splicing requirements, the length of the berries, and for a bit of stretch. We are using 16 mil Dyneema for the cap shrouds and 15 mil for the lowers and all the other stays. Once all the sections are cut, we begin splicing. We're using the Mobius Brummel splice, a locking splice, and for the berries, we are doing half the width times 10. With eight stays being replaced to Dyneema, we have a total of 16 splices to complete. We're adding an extra step in our rigging process by wrapping all the ends and thimbles with VB cord. This preventative measure helps keep the thimbles securely in place.
today we've been stretching the Dyneema. So we brought pre-heat stretch Dyneema, but when we put the splice in, we need to then take all the constructional stretch out of it. Now, one thing I have done just to test it is, I've stretched it, you can actually loosen them off again to re-splice it. Now, what we're using to stretch it today is we've got our four ton winch over in the corner there, and then we've got it through a four to one pulley system here. So we've got 16 ton worth of pressure we're putting on these and we're going until the winch trips out. So at the moment, we have one on here right now. And can you see that there? There's actually a bit of tension already on that. So if I put my foot here, just to show you how much tension there is gonna be, you ready? From here, just to give you an idea. So that there is 16 ton, and you can see that this is where it was, and that's how much extra it stretched. So uh, it's coming out of the splices and bedding in at either end. So we're leaving it for approximately two hours. A lot of people say overnight. We just unfortunately don't have the time. We've got too many of them to do. So we're leaving them for two hours to see how it goes. That's probably why I can get back into them. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, and then we're putting them on all ready to go. Yeah, look at this. Look how yeah. that is not moving. <laughs> Wow. Right now we are working on the attachments underneath. So the plan keeps evolving as we go. Um, uh, what I was going to do was I was going to use a turnbuckle on one side just so I can make sure I can center it properly. But we went to Runston and then a few other places and they're fairly expensive so we've decided not to. Then what I was going to do is I was going to make some soft shackles up. Uh, and I found that I've got some 2 mil Dyneema already on board. Uh, four mil apologies, it's two ton braking strain. So I'm just doing eight wraps around and tying it off. It looks a little messy. If it doesn't last, then I'll get a big, some bigger stuff and make some soft shackles. And ideally that's the way it'll end up is with soft shackles everywhere. Yeah, and what you mean by expensive, it was $800 a bottle screw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Australian, which is, which is quite expensive. This rope we had on board for free. So that's the way we decided to go. So this here was supposed to be the turnbuckle, but the turnbuckles, as Sam said before, range to about $800 each. And so we've gone with Dyneema and we're really stoked with it because it also means that down here we don't have dissimilar metals. And I think Sam's very stoked with how this has, is looking. Very, very stoked, yeah. And it's also a lot less drag in the water. When we're going along, we have a pressure wave come from the bow, it dips down and it comes up here. And we had the big turnbuckles and everything, they're always a wash. This is so much smaller, such a better profile. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll make us go faster. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, not a mistake that this one is shorter than that one. <laughs> it just looks like it. <laughs> this was gonna be a turnbuckle. Now we're putting on the Dyneema that holds the stay forward. So it runs from the monkey plate there all the way forward. And Charlie is holding the ladder for dad. Yeah. Now we daddy and my daddy. We are there and hiding the 
Let's talk numbers. Here's a breakdown of the costs. It was going to cost us 18,000 Australian dollars to re-rig the entire boat by a rigger, including the diamonds on the mast. Here's what we've spent on the rigging ourselves. $4,650.30 on synthetic rope, $3,188.59 on the forestay and inner forestay wires being made up and swaged in Brisbane, including fittings and X toggles. This brings our total cost of materials to $7,838.89. Our grand total does not include the diamonds on the mast. We're going to monitor the performance of the synthetic rigging. And if all goes well, we plan to replace the diamonds with synthetic rigging in the future. We did not replace the diamonds because doing so would require additional fittings. And as just mentioned before, one bottle screw alone cost $800. And the fittings for the diamonds would add up to be quite expensive. We want to evaluate the performance of the Dyneema rigging before investing in synthetic stays for these. So for now, our diamonds are staying as the original wire and not being replaced. All right, guys, the rigging is almost done. The last part to do is put some chafe protections onto the lowers. We've got some rope here in the color of burgundy. This is the color that we're gonna be trying to go with the boat, the new color scheme of the boat. And the reason we're putting chafe protection on the lowers is because in order to get from the back of the boat to the bow, we have to go past the, the stays and they're slanted in a bit. So you'll often see us holding and ducking around them. So we're putting tape protection on to protect against like dirt from our hands and grabbing it all the time. We're only putting it on the lowers because the caps, the bigger ones, have the tube on them already. So they already have tape protections on them. Yeah, so to reiterate, we used wire inside our furlers, A, because Dyneema, the weakness is chafe, and B, because we can't see it. And because we aren't too experienced with it with regards to rigging, we wanted to have it everywhere that we could see it. We'll let you guys know how long it lasts. At this stage, it was slightly more time consuming to do it took probably about double the amount of time it would if it was just a straight swap out for wire it was a heck of a lot cheaper though a heck of a lot lighter and i'm pretty excited to see how long it lasts what we're going to do is we're going to wait till the boat's floating before we do the final tune because a bit of a spoiler alert we're extending the boat so we're changing a fair bit at the back end and it's going to make our trim differently which means where the mast is in relation to the vessel trim will change so i'll probably have to move it back a little bit so we'll wait till we're in the water see where our new trim is hopefully yeah we want to go up around about eight centimeters or 80 mil in the stern compared to the bow so hopefully with this extension that's going to happen fingers crossed Fair bit of guesswork on that one. You'll be able to check out the videos and see how close we got it. But if you guys have any comments, yeah. leave them in the in the section comment section below. Yeah, any questions, any comments, where we got any of the products from, uh, costings, anything like that in Aussie dollars. Yep, we'll be more than happy to help you out and let you know. Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Bye guys. See ya. Thank you so much to our Patreons. Your support helps make these videos possible. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget to click that like and subscribe button and we will see you guys next week.